Making a noise before the Lord, whether it's joyful or not.
I'm glad where I, as I was blind, but now I see. Amen. Matthew chapter 1 this morning. Matthew chapter number 1. would be in God's house. Amen. I thank God though I was blind, now I see. Amen. Lord won't leave you in darkness, honey. I'll tell you that much. He won't do that. He'll bring you out of the darkness into the light. He'll make a difference in your heart and in your life. People don't understand that. They think we get religion. Uh, we don't get religion. We get S-A-V-E-D. That's called saved. Man, that's a relationship with God. All right, Matthew chapter number 1 this morning. I want to read several verses beginning in verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. Most wonderful time of the year. I, I Thanksgiving through Christmas and New Year's, I enjoy it. I enjoy I enjoy Christmas I really do I I just I just enjoy uh, preaching about the birth of the Son of God a lot of people have controversy about when he was born I don't think there's really any controversy he was born probably uh, the last of October uh, right in the middle of the fall of the season because these shepherds were abiding in the field with their flocks at night you didn't do that in the dead of winter but it's cold in Israel and it snows. I can take you to Luke chapter number 1 where Zacharias was of the course of Abiah. A-B-I. You go over to the book of Chronicles. Abijah was the eighth course. So we know when he was in there. He was in there about the last of July. The Bible said he went home to his wife nine months later. She brought forth John the Baptist. He was born the last of April. John the Baptist was six months older than the Lord. That puts his birth about what we would call October the 31st. Boy, what a, what a time. But I thank God. Listen, I've, I've, I just have a good time at Christmas. I don't know about how many enjoy Christmas. I enjoy it. You say, well, I endure it. Well, when, when you get everybody out of the house and you don't have to shop anymore, yeah, we just give them money. Amen. And then they tell us preemptively, how they're going to spend that money. They don't know yet how much they're going to get. Amen. I thought about just getting a card and taping a penny on the inside and watch the look on their face when it says, Merry Christmas, enjoy. Amen. And then go up and hug them and put a piece of money in their hand. Amen. Just watch that face fall. What? Hey, I thank God. I, I'm 74. This will be my 74th Christmas. Huh? I don't know what all transpired in the uh, 74 Christmases, but boy, when my mind goes back, boy, I'm telling hey, I see the wonder of it all. As a boy, I saw it through worldly eyes. Uh, my earliest memories of Christmas were not uh, a spiritual thing. They were in a worldly aspect. Presence under the tree and thoughts of a slave with reindeer pulling a little fat man with white hair and a beard who wore a red suit around and one of his reindeer had a red nose. <laughs> Amen. Hey, that's all right. I, I remember that. 
But I outgrew that pretty quick. One, when I found out that Santa Claus was the CEO of Fruit of the Loom, we got one good gift a year, and the rest of it we got underwear and socks. Anybody else that way? I told myself, Santa Claus must have an underwear factory someplace up there in the North Pole. So, uh, but uh, hey, that was just a way. Hey, we got something good every year, though. I remember one year we got brand new Waltham watches. Now, on the second hand, they had the little uh, diamond uh, triangular shaped red hand on that second hand. We got up and they were up on up, up over the hearth and I remember seeing those little red hands a ticking that time off. Boy, well, hey, I got up early in the morning saw them. Another time we got 10 speed Schwinn, no, they were three speeds. Schwinn bicycle. Boy, that was really, you know, I had a bicycle. Uh, the pedals were already broke off. You know, you got your feet on them little slick things. <laughs> uh, and we used to put cardboard on the, on the spokes to make them sound like, <laughs> boy, they, we thought they had a motor on that thing. Hey, I'm talking about good time. But something happened to me. My dad worked a lot. And I'm talking about a lot. He was a railroader. He worked anywhere 12, 14 hours a day, most of the time, seven days a week. So my dad was not able to put together the things for the, the kids. And my older brother went into the military. So guess, guess what my, my job was? <laughs> Me and mom would get in there and put everything together on Christmas Eve after the other the smaller ones went to bed and all that. But I, I think about the time, boy, what what a blessing it was. Even as I grew older, it was a time of cookies and candies and all kinds of good smell and stuff. How many of you ladies are cooking? Uh, uh, hey, my, my, hey, my wife, boy, you ought to have seen the serving bar. I have to use the word serving bar between the kitchen and the dining room. Uh, my wife, she had every kind of candy cookies, oh, just stuff everywhere. Boy, she'd get in there and cook and cook and cook. She needed a little girl to cook with. They man just had two knothead boys, but mama, hey, mama would have it cooked. But I remember pulling taffy. Anybody remember that? Oh, some of you don't even know what taffy is. We'd make that taffy, and then we'd have to get our hands buttered up, and we'd pull that taffy and put it together and pull that taffy, and you'd pull that taffy and it got just right, cut it up in pieces and let it harden. Hey, I remember popping popcorn and stringing it up to put it on the Christmas tree. Uh, all these things that we did as kids. Always loved that time. I remember family breakfast at mom and dad's house every Christmas morning. On Christmas morning, the kids opened up their gifts. We went up to mom and dad's house. We had bacon and sausage and country ham, and we had frog legs. Huh? Anybody like frog? We had frog legs. On, hey, we had red-eye gravy and sawmill gravy. Anybody? How, how many like, like that uh, red-eye gravy? Anybody? I, I call it heart attack on a biscuit. It's nothing but coffee and grease, honey. I mean, boy, you put it in there, pour most of that grease and got a little skimmings off that country ham, pour that uh, coffee in there and start stirring that stuff around. And boy, and when you put it in there, the grease and the skimmings off of that separate and the skimmings of, off of that uh, country ham go to the bottom and it makes a red eye with clear up above it. Now you stir it up and put it on a biscuit. Hey, I remember... Uh, going to Barbara's grandmother's house for Christmas Day dinner. Then we go to her mama's house. Boy, we look like, uh, I guess, who, who's that Michelin man or that little doughboy or whatever he is. We, hey, we'd lay around the afternoon. We were so big we couldn't wiggle. But they were good times. They were good times with family. But I thank God in 1976, Christmas changed again. Now, for the first time in 1976, I knew it was more about him than it was us. Boy, things dramatically say, hey, I thank God when you get saved, things, they, they're different, all right? Uh, not everything magically goes away. Listen, you, if you're a new convert, you need to understand God's going to deal with you a little bit at a time, all right, with where you are to bring you to where you need to be. That's the way God is. Aren't you glad He's gracious? 
God is so gracious to us. Oh man, He is so patient with us and slow with us and works with us face to face. We slowly become different as we get older in the Lord. Boy, when you get saved, you get changed, but then that change starts working all through your life. I remember how God so graciously worked in my heart. I'd always seen manger scenes and heard a biblical account of the birth of Christ but that year it changed forever for me. You see, salvation changed both my life and my perspective of Christ. I thank God this morning. I'm going to look just a few portions of Scripture real quick. And we're going to go home. Somebody said, Preacher, I hope you're not going to be long this morning. Hey, I'm getting shorter all the time. I saw that beautiful hairdo of destinies. I got to pick on you. Girl, that is... That is gorgeous. Amen. Uh, yes, I love that. Amen. I love that. Amen. Hey, she looks so grown up. I asked them if I took my hair and put some of this gel on it and pushed it straight up in the air, would I be growing up? <laughs> it makes her look so grown up over there. I love that. Amen. I, I want to look just for a second. He said in verse number 23, he explained to Joseph. Joseph was hurt and confused at this particular time. The Bible clarified in here that Mary was his espoused wife. Look at verse number 18. Before they came together, he called her a wife. Why? The betrothal period of the Jew was as binding as marriage itself. Now, we live in days of engagements, and they break the engagements, and they get out, and they pass rings back and forth. Then they get on Judge Judy and try to figure out who gets the ring. Amen. Hey, hey, that's where it is today. But see, back in those days, when you were espoused, you were betrothed. That was as binding as marriage itself. That's why it calls him a wife. They refer to that betrothed uh, woman as a wife before they came together. That's why when you get to Luke, he didn't know his wife, or get a little farther here, he didn't know his wife till, all right? And let me just say that Mary was not a perpetual virgin. When Christ was born, hey, the Bible names their other brothers and sisters. Mary and Joseph had a house full of kids. Just this one was a little special because his father wasn't Joseph. His father was God. But after that, they had a normal man to wife relationship. She was a sinner like everybody else. When she went to Elizabeth, she said, My soul doth rejoice in God my Savior. Only sinners need Savior. She was a sinner. Boy, that upsets people. A blessed woman. Yes, she was. She was blessed of God to carry the Son of God in her womb because God knew He could trust her with Him. He had a human side and he had a divine side. So he was confused. He was going to put her away privily. He was minded to do that. They could do that in the Old Testament. The Bible talked about fornication. Fornication took place before marriage. Adultery took place after marriage. So we find that he was thinking about putting her quietly away. Not making a public example, but just walking away from it because he thought of infidelity first. And God came to where He was. I thank God, hey, Joseph was a good man. And he said, that which is in your wife, He said, that is the Son, and His name shall be called Emmanuel. And He is going to be Jesus. He'll save His people from their sins. I thank God for that this morning. I just want to look for a moment who He was. You see, he was more than just a babe in a manger. You're talking about almighty God Himself dwelling in that conceived child. Now, you say, when does life begin? Friend, let me tell you, you're somebody the moment of conception. Several times through the Bible said, hey, David said, he knew me when I was conceived in secret. You got some of the prophets. They said, hey, he, he told them John will be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. You go back over to Zacharias, these others, listen, hey, God knew them 
Almighty God. Now, not just a babe. You need to understand that Old Testament, Jehovah God, the Creator. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. Jehovah God created everything. This is the Word that was made flesh in John 1, 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among you, and you beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So you got a God man. He's all, mo he's all man on His mother's side. He was all God on his father's side. You got someone 100% man, 100% God. You say, I don't understand that. God never asks you to understand. God asks you to trust. God in flesh. Is that not what he said? He said, yeah, you'll call his name Jesus. Going to bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. All caps. I want you to notice that in your Bible. Do you notice that? Everything. Why? Because that's the way they referenced Jehovah God in the Old Testament. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That word means Jehovah. It means a self-existing one. It means the eternal one. The one from everlasting to everlasting that the Bible said, Thou art God in the present tense. I'm talking about God is born. He's more than just a babe. I see a lot of these churches and they believe that Jesus Christ began in Bethlehem. He always was. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, He was as a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Christ was already in the mind of God. He was that lamb that was slain. You see, He was God with us, not just a son of God, almighty God. Mary was not the mother of God. You hear some people say, Hail Mary, mother of God. God has no mother. God created Mary in the womb that He was born in, friend. She is not the mother of God. She was the mother of the physical body of Jesus Christ. She was the one that was just to bear. She called herself the handmaiden of the Lord. Isn't that a blessing? Hey, God Almighty. Oh, what a thrill it is. Pure, sinless, and separate from sinners this morning. He walked with sinners. He ate with sinners. He was a friend of sinners. And thank God He died for them, but He was separate from them. Jesus never compromised His holiness or integrity to be like them or to be with them in that area. He went to them. He was a friend of sinners. He wanted into Himself, but He maintained who He was. You know, we got people today say you got to go be like them, act like them, look like them, walk like them, talk like them, and everything else in order to win them. Friend, I'll tell you how you're going to win them to Christ. You're going to win them to Christ when you maintain your spiritual integrity. I thank God that that was God born in the flesh. Oh, what a thrill. He was the creator of all things and made that womb. His goings forth were from everlasting to everlasting and the creator became man that morning when he was born. He's with us, which means that he is identifying with us through his birth. I want you to notice in verse 23, not God in us, but Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. God with us. Aren't you glad this morning He's with you? He said over in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5, the last part of that verse, Nevertheless, I will never leave thee, that means He'll be here with you, nor forsake thee, that means He's on your side. Hey, aren't you glad this morning that Jesus Christ is on our side? And if God be with us, oh, let me tell you, if He's for us, He is who can stand against us this morning? We're somebody going somewhere because that babe was God. I'm careful how I deal with the name of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he declared, verse 21, all caps, they understood what he said. They understood him this morning. 
He's our God. Hey, that's what Christmas is to me this morning. He's more than a babe. He's the Christ. Over in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus came under the coast of Caesarea Philippi, his ask, he, he asked His disciples saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Huh? you got a lot of people believe a lot of things about Jesus. He said, what are they saying about me? Some say they are John the Baptist. Some Elias, others Jeremiah, so one of the prophets. But he said unto them, Whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Now, I love Simon Peter. He's got a mouth that's about as big as the state of Texas. When he went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, he saw Jesus and he saw Elijah and he saw Moses transfigured on that mountain. The Bible said, and he wist not what to say. What do you say when you don't know what to say? Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Amen. Preachers get their foot hung in their mouth. I saw that cartoon one time of a man sitting on a doctor's examination table with his foot in his mouth, his jaws sticking out to here on both sides. And the doctor said, well, Reverend, he said, it ain't near as bad as it was last time. Hey, I have had my foot in my mouth. We used to call it hoof and mouth disease in, in Bible college. Sometimes you get your hoof hung in your mouth, all right? Hey, I'm talking about who he was. Listen what, to listen what that man said. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That word Christ means anointed. Chosen for a task. Anointed. The first mention of Christ Himself is found over in the book of Genesis chapter 3. The Bible talked about the voice of one walking in that garden. Adam and Eve walked with the voice of God. Not a physical presence. They walked with that voice. They walked with Him and talked with Him. They knew who He was. And what, boy, when they sinned, boy, they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. They heard the voice of the Lord walking. Isn't that interesting? Hey, they knew He was a coming. Hey, you, you say why? He was always on time. Son, he always showed up on time. I, I like to get someplace on time. I'm one of those over-punctual types. My wife is just the opposite of me. Time is relative, all right? To me, time is time is time, son. I'm telling you, I usually get someplace a little early and drive around to make sure that I didn't have a traffic jam stop me and then try to ease into the parking lot and try to get there just about on time. Why? I, I don't like to upset people. If they tell you to come at a certain time, hey, they may not be ready for you to come. Overpunctual. Let me tell you, they walked with that voice of God. The first time you find Him mentioned is the voice of the Lord. And the second time you find Him, the seed of the woman. That's what He's talking about in Matthew. The seed of the woman. You say, how do you know the Bible is the Word of God? Nobody can see that seed because it is invisible to us. The male seed is not. Friend, that female seed is an invisible thing. That's something only God could have known. And He said God would take that egg, that egg of that woman, and fertilize it by the Holy Ghost of God and place the Son of God in that womb. And hey, I'm talking about who He was. He was the Christ, the Anointed One. We find Him over in uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. God told Isaac, uh, Jay, uh, told uh, Abraham, Take thine own son Isaac, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. You take him and offer him a burnt offering. He said, I'll show you where to go. So the next day he got up. They, they claved the wood. They got on their asses and they went. And then the people that went with them, they stopped them, said, you can't go any farther. This is between me and Abraham and Isaac. So they stayed there. And as they're walking, oh, Isaac's got the wood on his shoulders. He's a grown man. Not a child. 
probably about 40 years of age, 30 to 40 years of age, a, a grown man. He put that wood on his shoulder and he said, Father, he said, we have the wood and we have the fire, but he said, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Where's the sacrifice? And in verse number 8 of chapter 22, the book of Genesis, prophetically, he made this statement. He said, the Lord shall... What? He said the Lord Himself is going to present Himself. He'll be that sacrifice. So many celebrate Christmas have no spiritual comprehension of who that babe was born so long ago. I want to say He was my Jesus. Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ. He's more than a babe in a manger. He's my Savior this morning. Listen, if you're here without Christ, oh my... Don't play Russian roulette. Listen to what he said over in the book of Luke. In the book of book, Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Savior, born to die. Came into the world, seed of the woman, in the fullness of a promise. Came into the world to hang on an old rugged cross. Came into the world to pay for the sin of the world. Came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. They, hey, Paul said, this is a, how, how did he phrase that? He said this, this saying, he said, is worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You say, well, that was wrong if you're chief. No, when he was, he was chief of sinners, I was chief later. I'm talking about he came to die for an old sinner. I lived like the world boy and I was in the military. Let me tell you something. I worked in the service club as a bouncer. We opened that thing. We shut it down after everybody left. I, lived, I, I have lived a rough life in a lot of different areas, in and out of places, even after married, that I had no business of going Hey, I'm talking about God did a wonderful thing for me when He took all my sin away. But we find that He is my Savior. It's a personal thing. Mary blessed God. Paul said of whom I'm chief. I'm glad He came to die for me 46 years ago. November was my birth month. I was born in the flesh May the 15th, 1948. Evansville, Indiana, St. Mary's Hospital to Archie D. and Hilda E. Johnston. Amen. I had a physical birth. Thank God I had a spiritual birth in November 1976 on Sunday night. Now I'm talking about He is my Savior this morning. Is He yours? He became my wonderful payment for sin. He became my propitiation for sin. He became my advocate. He became my mediator. He became my high priest. He is my Lord. He is my King this morning. There's nobody like this man Jesus. I'm talking about who, who we're looking for this year. Well, what a blessing. He's not only a babe in a manger. He's not only my Savior. He's my Lord of my life. I, loved old, I love old uh, Thomas. Boy, oh, Doubting Thomas. How would you like to have a big mouth pinned on you like Peter and Doubting Thomas on if you were Thomas? That thing stuck with him. Why? He just didn't come on the first Sunday. He'd like a lot of Baptists. He just decided, well, I'm not going to come this week. And Jesus came. And the next week, they told him, they said, He came, He'll come again. And the next week, He came again. No Thomas was there. Lord dealt with old Thomas. Told him, He said, Hey, you reach your fingers and put them in my hands in your hand and thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. Old Thomas never put his fingers in those hands. He never put his hand in the side. He simply said, My Lord and my God. Boy, what, hey, what a thrill this morning to have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Do you understand what I'm saying? People get all mixed up on Lord. But so many people call Him Savior, but they fear to call Him Lord. They're afraid of that word. My Lord, my God. I believe that when a person accepts Christ, they accept Him as their Lord and Savior. 
They say, well, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the what? Lord Jesus Christ. If they're going together. You say, well, preacher, you're not perfect. Oh, how long did it take you to figure that one out? Hey, man, hey, don't you get mad at me because I'm a human being. People get mad at me. They think I'm supposed to have one foot in heaven and one on earth, and I don't sin. I am a sinner that is saved by the grace of God. Now, that's not an excuse for my sin. Boy, God deals with... Oh, does God ever deal with me? I mean, every day of my life, hey, I'm a sinner. Did you know I'm a sinner every day? You know, I carry sin in my flesh... That's why Paul said, in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. He said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Every time the spiritual side of me wants to serve God, the old flesh wants to sit down. <laughs> Boy, he's lazy. He's trifling. He's no good. He is the mystery of iniquity itself that I live inside of. My flesh desires everything it had. And hey, I'm talking about before I got saved. Did you know God didn't change my desires on the fleshly side? He saved them on the spiritual side. I hear all these preachers, boy, and I got saved. God took this away. He took alcohol away from me. He took my cigarettes away from me. He took my chewing tobacco away from me. He took my... Let me tell you, God didn't take anything away from me. He told me to give it to Him. Son, I have fought with God all my life. Lord, I gave it to you. I'm done. Hey, I'm sanctified. And God said, now, I want this one. Oh, Lord, it's a little bitty one. Huh? You ever try to reason with God? That ain't no big thing, Lord. Hey, let me tell you something. It's big to God because He is holy. So I wrestle and fight, and one day I get on my knees and say, God, I'm tired. You ever get tired? Tired of fighting the same old battle? I say, Lord, <laughs> I'm tired. I, I give it to you. He said, good. Now I want this one over here. I said, oh, that ain't fair. I want to give me the whole list at the same time. Aren't you glad He doesn't give you the whole list? I'm talking about God this morning. Lord. It doesn't mean that you do something to be saved. It doesn't mean you give up something to be saved. A lot of people have a problem with the word repentance. Repentance is... Hey, it is, the definition is given in Hebrews chapter 6. What is repentance? He said, repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Do you know what he just said? He just said it's to repent of your sinful nature and who and what you are knowing you cannot get to heaven on your own and you turn to the only one who can save your rotten soul and that's Christ. I didn't repent of drinking. I didn't repent of smoking. I, I, when I, I got saved on that Sunday night, I went home. I still had not packed a winst in my pockets, you know, still had beer in the refrigerator. Had, a, had all those things. Hey, I went home, poured the booze out. God broke my cusser. God took this. God took that. God took this. He's still working on me this morning. I'm not perfect. If you want a perfect pastor, I don't really know what to tell you to do except pastor your own church. You ever notice how these people can't get along with any other pastor? Go start one. Say, why do they do that? They can't get along with anybody else, friend. They find fault, they find fault, they find fault, but the only place they never find fault is when they look in the mirror. So they go start their own little cult someplace and their own little church someplace. So hey, hey, they'll do it all the time. I love the name of these churches, Unity Baptist Church. Built on church split. Fellowship Baptist Church. You couldn't fellowship with anybody else. I like the one Corinth Baptist Church. At least them people. I would never name my church Corinth Baptist Church. God didn't have anything good to say to that crowd. 
And I'm talking about Lord this morning. You see, He is my Lord. Thank God. That doesn't mean I'm sinless. It means I hate what I and who I am. I battle who I am. But I never battle with he, who He is. Do you understand me? I know who Jesus is. He's my Lord and my Savior. Thank God. One of the most exciting portions of Scripture was old Doubting Thomas. Hey, man. No, I'm not sinless. And I, hey, I must confess with the great Apostle Paul, I'm chief of sinners. I desire to live for the Lord. My body desires to live for the world. And the fight is there. I'm just going to read something. Written a long time ago. Anybody ever heard of Billy Sunday? Now they're probably going to get me on. And I've got permission to do this. So please don't. A lot of times they say, oh, that's a copyright violation. You dig old Billy up and ask him if it was. Billy didn't know what a copyright violation was. Billy Sunday. He wrote this, Our Matchless Christ. To many, Jesus Christ is only a grand subject for a painting, a heroic theme for a pen, a beautiful form for a statue, a thought for a song. But to those of us who have heard His voice, who have felt His pardon, who have received His benediction, He is music, He is warmth, he is light, He is joy, He is hope, He is salvation. A friend who never forsakes. One who lifts us up when others try to push us back down. We cannot wear Him out. We pile on Him all our grief and our troubles. And He is always ready to lift us back up again. He's always ready to help. He addresses us with the same love. He beams upon us with the same smile and He pities us with the same compassion. There's no name like His. It's more inspiring than Caesar's, more musical than Beethoven's, more patient than Lincoln's. The name of Jesus throbs with life, weeps with all pathos, groans with all pain, stoops with all love. It, his breath is laden with perfume who like Jesus can pity a homeless orphan, who like Jesus can welcome back a prodigal son, who like Jesus can make a drunkard sober, who like Jesus can illuminate a cemetery plowed with graves, who like Jesus can make a queen unto God out of a lost woman of the street, who like Jesus can catch the tears of human sorrow in His bowl, who like Jesus can kiss away all our sorrows, I struggle for a metaphor with which to express Jesus. He's not like the bursting forth of an orchestra. That's too loud. And it may be out of tune. He's not like a sea with lashes in a rage by a storm. That's too boisterous. He's not a, like a mountain wreathed in lightning, canopied with snow, for that's too solitary and remote. He is the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. A Gale of Spices from Heaven. Written by Billy Sunday. Over a hundred years ago. Amen. And his name shall be interpreted Emmanuel. God with us. Aren't you glad this morning he's with us? Amen. Let's stand. We're going to have an invitation. If you need to come this morning. God be with us. God is. More than a babe in a manger. This wasn't about Mary. This wasn't about Joseph.